Kevin, uh, good afternoon. Uh, obviously haven't gotten to see all the guys that have been added to the this defensive side of the ball this offseason yet, but as you look at the changes, uh, it, what are you excited about uh, with these people coming? Uh, I mean, like you said, I mean, obviously everybody isn't here, but coming from our virtual meetings, you know, I think we really made some good strides. Uh, obviously, Shane said it yesterday, made some little tweaks, made some improvements on the defense. And then obviously coming back, being here with the guys, running around, competing, having fun. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, you know, Christian Fulton, Breon Borders, Amani Hooker back there with me at safety, all the guys in front of me, the D-line. We're just having a lot of fun, just trying to get better, you know, every single day, just 1% every day. Buck? What's going on, Kevin? I'm, you bring up wanting to – 1% better every day during these OTAs, but specifically with this time of year, uh, how how are you and your group trying to translate what you're doing in the meeting rooms to the practice field at this point? I know it's still early. Sure. I mean, obviously, something that was really talked about for us last year was obviously a historically bad year on third downs. So I think that's something that we're stressing a lot, just this OTA of being better on third downs, really being aggressive, stressing, you know, not being so far off as third and short, making sure that we're getting up on these guys, we're challenging. Uh, we feel like we can play with anybody in this league, so we have to go out there and show and prove every single day at practice and continue just to get better at those little things. Kayla? Hey, KB, um, obviously still early on, but what have your impressions been of, of some of these younger guys um, that, that have joined the defense? I've been really impressed, honestly. Uh, like I said, I think Christian Fulton, uh, Breon, Chris Jackson, uh, to pretty much every guy. I feel like I know I'm going to leave some guys out, but I think everybody's just been improving, getting better. Um, and, and that's all. That's really what it's all about. Obviously, you know, we're not full pads or nothing like that, but from what I've seen that I think guys are really trying to pay attention to details, do the little things, do the things that their coaches do every day. And obviously it's not a finished product, but we're working towards, you know, trying to be a finished product by the time the season kicks off. Terry? KB, I know you've always viewed yourself as a guy who's a leader and leading by actions and words, but literally now kind of being the last man standing from last year's starters in the secondary, do you embrace that role and take it even more seriously this off season? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I obviously still have to lead by example, but being a vocal leader, not only just for defense, but for the entire team, you know, reaching over to the other side of the ball, you know, coaching up young receivers. If they have questions about, you know, what things we're doing on defense, I'm trying to help those guys out to help us the team out. So I'm just trying to take a vocal leadership with the entire team, not just the secondary, and just showing and prove every single day, making sure that I'm, you know, full effort, full tilt to the, t full tilt to the tackle, excuse me, and uh, just doing little things right every single day to show the young guys this is how to be a pro. Uh, this is how we go out there and win ball games with the Tennessee Titans. So just trying to do the little things right. Luke, Kevin, we know that that you and Kenny and a Dory and Malcolm and some of the other guys that were here last year and beyond that. Uh, we're really good at, at communicating and being on the same page in the secondary. What's it going to take to reestablish that and, and get you guys on the same page with all of the new players you're going to have this year? Building relationships. Um, I think in the defensive back room, uh, probably one of the most underrated qualities of a good defensive back room is relationships. So just trying to build those relationships, not only, you know, in the locker room, in the meeting room, but outside of, you know, outside of the building, obviously we're still under certain protocols. But uh, doing whatever we can to try to continue to build those relationships, get to know each other uh, better. And obviously, once we get the full group in here, um, that's what it's going to be about. Because I think once you really get to know a guy and uh, you kind of get close with the guy, it's kind of easy to be out there in the field. You know, you can kind of give a guy a look and he already know what you're talking about. So I think that's the biggest thing that we have to continue to build this year is the relationships just off the field uh, so we can feel more comfortable with each other, you know, on Sundays. And I'm curious, have you met at all with Coach Schwartz or, or worked with him in practice at all? And what's your understanding of how he's going to be able to help you guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously he's here as an advisory role. Um, this guy has been doing it for a long time at a high level, coaching a bunch of different teams, been a head coach, been a D coordinator. Uh, it's funny, he actually worked me out uh, at MTSU coming out, uh, I think when he was with the Eagles. And even just talking to him back then, he had so much knowledge to give me about some guys that he's coached. And uh, I haven't met with him on a one-on-one -on -one basis just yet, but I've had conversations with him on the field, just talking about different things. I think it's going to be a great asset for us uh, throughout the entire year. Jim Wyatt. And KB, you talk about building relationships. Uh, I, I know every year 
is di- is a new team is different but does this does this seem like you guys in a lot of ways are starting over a lot of guys up front new a lot of guys in the back end new and are you just are you still in the process of learning guys understanding guys and how much of a challenge is that yeah honestly man something that i've learned and you know as i'm you know continue to play uh, in this league is that you know you have to start over every single year obviously i think that you know sometimes some successes or certain things that you do from the year before can carry over but I think as a, as a mentality wise, you have to kind of eliminate all the success that you had last year, restart, restart your mind, reset goals and start all over. So obviously, yes, we're starting over this year. We have a new group of guys. We have we have new goals. Uh, we want to be a lot better than we were last year. So that's the motivation, trying to go up and trying to improve. Right. If it was third downs, pass defense, sacks, everything. Uh, we're just trying to improve at every facet of our defense. So, yes, absolutely. We're starting over. Paul. Hey, Kevin, it seemed like uh, last year you were maybe uh, at, at safety playing more left, right than you had in the past during during your time with the team. Um, is, is that an accurate assessment? Do you anticipate more strong, free, more center field going forward, or is that maybe to be determined? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously to be determined. I think that Hook has a really good skill set. He can pretty much do everything out there. So me and him were working together. Uh, he's going to be able to do some things. I'm going to be able to do some things. So it's not necessarily going to be, you know, a free or strong or a left or right. It's going to be interchangeable parts of the defense. So whereas though, you know, a quarterback or offense don't get a beat on, okay, this guy's always playing man or this guy's always in the post or something like that. So we're continuing to work on different things, trying to, you know, switch it up. Obviously this is the time to try everything. And then once we get the training camp, we kind of lock down on, you know, different skill sets and things that we're better at or, you know, things we continue to work on. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a definite of, of what we're going to be doing. We're out here just trying to improve. Was it more left, right last year than it had been? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily Sorry, say was that. It, was it? Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, yeah, so most of the time I was maybe lined up on the left side of the field. Um, but at the same time, like you said, depending on matchups, depending on different teams, if it was a tight end, obviously a, a, a top guy, obviously I want to be the guy to cover him. So, like you said, it just depends on the formation, the call that we have on defense, you know, depends on our alignment. Appreciate it. Yeah. Gentry. Yeah. KB, I know it's, it's a business and, and this sort of thing happens every year, but, but did the level of attrition this off season in the secondary surprise you uh, with the number of guys? And, you know, now as you, as you kind of bring in a new group, what, what do you most want to see to try to improve on last season? Yeah, honestly, man, nothing is really, really surprising. Uh, every single year you see things that you might not have thought was going to happen, uh, but it's a business. And just like you said, I understand it to the fullest. And those certain things that you can't necessarily be concerned about, you just go out there and try to put your best foot forward. You know, whatever happens, happens. With this group of guys, obviously we have new faces in the, in the secondary. So we're just trying to gel, come together, get better, and, you know, let those things handle itself. You know, at the end of the day, we're just trying to be the best that we can be, be the best in the NFL. And, you know, that's our goal. So at the end of the day, we're going to try to do anything we can every single day to uh, try to get 1% better. Corey Curtis. KB, um, you went – Back when Logan was here and you guys had the whole MMCP thing, um, that was kind of a focal point that brought a new group of guys together, kind of became an identity. Is, is there something like that you want to try to do with this group to, to kind of make you guys want to give you, give you like one focal point to look at? Yeah, I mean, you no, know, the MMCMB deal was something that kind of just came about organically. And I don't think that you want to try to force an identity on a group of guys. You have to continue to work together and uh, just try to be better. So um, when it comes to trying to have like a, a logo or a name, that's something that we have to go out there and earn. So I think for us, um, obviously with last year, I think that we wasn't aggressive enough. You know, we wasn't playing uh, like on Red if it was third downs or whatever. We just got to be more aggressive. So if that's one thing that I think that we can try to continue to improve on, you know, just as OTAs is being aggressive and challenging guys, you know, no matter who's out there in the field, challenging guys and make guys make contested throws. You know, those guys get paid too. But at the end of the day, if a guy's catching the ball, he has to be challenged. Uh, so that's our main focus this year, is challenging every single person that we go up against because uh, we fear no one. Teron. Yeah, Kev, a couple of years ago, you know, you had said that you wanted to step up and, and be a leader. And now Amani Hooker, that's what he's saying he wants to do. So my question would be, what are some of the things that, that you feel will allow him to be able to step up in that role? And why do you think that he'll be a, an excellent running mate for you? in the safety tandem? 
Yeah, I think, you know, to be a good leader, you have to be a great follower. And I think Amani's been a great follower since he's been here, you know, watching me and Kenny or just watching any of the veteran guys, learning from them, learning how to be a pro. So now he's going into that role. He's out there playing. He's being more vocal. He's making calls, making checks. And that's, just, you know, that's the start of it, going out there, being assured of yourself, knowing what you need to do. So when you assure yourself and know what you need to do, you can coach another guy up. And I think he's been doing pretty great at that. And uh, I think we're going to be a pretty good running mate this year. We're not going to make any predictions about what we're going to do or anything like that. But, you know, just being out there in OTAs, man, I think we have a really good feel for each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, we can always improve, and we're trying to improve every day. Last question, Jim Wyatt. Hey, KB, what, what advice you give to, you know, the young guys with Molden and Forley, and, and what have kind of been your early impressions of them? I know it hadn't been out there, but just from right. seeing them around the building. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, they, you know, they, they have their own rehab programs and stuff like that. The something that I just tell them all the time is just, you know, watch the veterans. One thing about, you know, when I first got in the league, I had guys like Jason McCourty, Brian Arako, Jarrell, and all those guys. Uh, not only did I listen with my ears, but I listened with my eyes. Um, one thing that I did when I first got into the league was, you know, I, I looked at the parking lot. When I got there in the morning, I was looking at cars. You know, what car is here early in the morning? Okay, this guy's here. I'm asking Jason, hey, what time are you getting here in the morning? Are oh, you getting here two, two hours before the beating? Why are you coming here so early? You know, I'm getting rehab. I'm getting the work out and I'm doing the little things. And obviously those guys had played for a long time. So that's something that I wanted to do. So I just tell the young guys, watch the vets, learn from them as quickly as you can to how to be a pro and the little things you need to do. Because at the end of the day, this league is obviously very competitive and it's a business. So everything that you can do to try to elongate your career, uh, to go out there and make plays and put yourself in position, watch more film and things like that, it's going to do nothing but improve your chances of being successful. So that's something I tell all the young guys, not just the corner, just everybody on the team. And I know it's early, but you, you kind of like their mindset early from what you're saying. Yeah, you know, just in the class, some of the guys are being sharp. Um, I think that just listening to them in the meetings, they sound sure of themselves. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to be able to take it for the meeting room to the field. So I'm definitely excited to see those guys on the, on the field. Uh, those guys are working extremely hard to get back to get back out there with us. So um, hopefully we'll get them out there soon. But, you know, everybody has their own program. Uh, but I'm excited about those guys, honestly.